Well, this afternoon, I did speak with Kamala Sharma and asked him uh, about that withheld legal advice. The reason I did it was because I had said I will develop for them a recommendation as to what should be done based on the best legal brains in the Commonwealth. And so this was an exercise which was done in confidence, an internal process, in order to develop, together with other contributions that I had, a plan which was to be submitted under what's, my, what's called my good offices to Sri Lanka to work on. So the president breaks the rule of law, you discover he most certainly has, and nothing happens to him. Well, what they have now is on the basis of the advice that I received legally, what I feel should be done in this field. That was really the purpose But I mean, this, this, is, this is cloud cuckoo land. Navi Pillay, the uh, person who is actually there for the United Nations to vet what's going on on the human rights front, is saying it's descending into autocracy, and if anything, matters are getting worse. And yet, this is the moment when you feel that the advice that you got from your lawyers should not even be put to the eight foreign ministers. Well, right now, talk. the advice is with the consultative committee in the parliament, and that is the purpose for which it was meant. It's but exercise. I'm talking about the Commonwealth. Sec I'm talking about the Commonwealth of which you are the secretary general. Eight foreign ministers had to meet in March to determine whether Sri Lanka was indeed in breach of these particular tenets of the Commonwealth, and they found they could not find because you would not tell them these, the legal advice you these got. Ministers, why did you keep it from them? These ministers, in fact, have encouraged But why did you keep your offices. advice from I them? I kept it because it was done in, a, in confidence in order to secure legal opinion on which I was constructing my good offices to be presented to a member state. But if these this foreign ministers had known, they would not have sanctioned the meeting to go ahead in Sri Lanka because... That very month, in the presence of the Queen, you had signed this document, the Charter of the Commonwealth, a very important document which sets out that the rule of law, human rights, good governance are the absolute tenets, democracy, by which the Commonwealth will judge a state. There is no state in the Commonwealth that is in greater breach of those four principles than Sri Lanka. This was not, and you want to go ahead with this This was summit. not a document which was public in nature at all. Well, it should it's have been. An advice. It should have been. It is an advice with the Secretary General very often in the pursuit of the good offices of the Secretary General uh, secures in order to build that advice. How are these Which ministers to make a judgment on Sri Lanka if they don't know what you know? Because I give them a report as to what my good offices are doing and they, they have full knowledge of what it is that is happening in respect of all the areas in which the Secretary General is working. Do you, as Secretary General, agree with the United Nations demand that there should be a full, independent, international inquiry into the killings at the end of the Civil War in Sri Lanka? That is a, a subject which is being done and dealt with in another no, 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 no. You live in the world. The Commonwealth in is part of the world. And the World Organization, the United Nations, has said this must happen. Do you believe it should happen? What the United Nations have said is that by a certain time limit, which is April, investigation should happen. So I am fully aware and respect the process that is happening there. But you have a third of the leaders of the world turning up um, in Sri Lanka before that April deadline, before the president has shown any sign whatever of agreeing to the demands of the United Nations. And in some way, you believe that for some reason the Commonwealth Secretariat is above any question of what the UN is concerned about. It's not, it's not above at all. It's just that every organization has its own points of strength and, and design to do a certain work. But we're talking about fundamentals. We're talking now about these, fundamentals. These leaders can take a view on this issue in the United Nations context. What I do here in Sri Lanka is, in fact, pursuing on the coal face in Sri Lanka some very hard challenges. Torture is still going on. 12,000 disappearances since the end of the war, and they are continuing. Killings. Now, this is not good enough, is it? And for you to put into the public arena the idea of a conference which is simply going to give a blessing to a man who is suspected of grievous war crimes is surely itself a crime. It's not sufficient to say that we are not doing anything there at all. 
We I'm have not done, saying you're not doing, doing it. Torture. You're doing a lot. You're about We've to have a big conference session. We've done a lot of work on moving forward with the human rights commissions on many fronts. We've done this work on uh, judicial and with what effect? With what effect? Now, everything which you do with the member state does not, the results are not forthcoming overnight. I do realize that out there, there's a lot of skepticism which will get somewhere or not. But I think in the given period of time, which we have had, we've made very good progress. And of course, we have to keep on seeing that this progress is made. What is this progress? What is this effect? Where is the justice to those people who lost the families two, the and loved ones the in the massacres at the end of the, the war? The two processes that have been started by us, which is a national plan on reconciliation, which is being done by us, as well as this inquiry into torture will bring out the questions of truth, of accountability, and of disappearances. I firmly believe in the fact that unless you know the truth, and if you want healing, how can you have forgiveness? Well, we know the truth. The truth is that the president of Sri Lanka stands accused of very, very serious infringements of human rights, which have cost many, many lives. And he is going to be allowed to shake the hand of 50 leaders coming through, and in many ways, you've played a role in bringing that about. The decision, as I said, of holding this shogun belongs to the leaders. But at no point right have you now, said, I don't think this should happen, this isn't good for the Commonwealth. I've never heard what, any of that from you. What is good for the Commonwealth is to engage in, in creating real progress and constructive progress in the areas of human rights and the rule of law, which is what I'm engaged in. The Secretary-General of the Commonwealth, Kamala Sharma, talking to me earlier at his headquarters.